Hi, continuing on the OFDMA and Wi-Fi 6 thread, I thought of looking at the OFDMA uh, radio resource uh, organization in Wi-Fi 6. We survey 4G and 5G. My name is uh, Shrikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. Uh, please also note there are many other aspects which I have covered in other videos where I have put the details of which I have put in the notes section. So I just want to focus, as I said, on some of the scheduler challenges which we now are, uh, you know, hearing in public domain. And if I just take the simplest example, which is the 20 megahertz case in Wi-Fi 6, these are the various bandwidth split options defined in the standard. Okay. And what are some nuances in this? Let's say if two users have to be allocated, let's say this could be an option where both are given equal resources you see that there is invariably some wastage of bandwidth here, okay? This is because in Wi-Fi 6, a single user cannot be given more than one RU in a PPDU. Wi-Fi 7 will improve on that, but these are some inflexibilities. And if you look at all these possibilities, a practical scheduler cannot evaluate all these possibilities at every given instant, right? So it should have some subset worked out Okay, and those could be the ones it will have to make a choice. So al already we are working with a suboptimal case and in that we make a choice. Invariably, I think there's going to be some bandwidth wastage. Okay, because we can't have this, uh, you know, user being given multiple RUs and we can't consider all the possibilities, etc, etc. Okay. I do not know if this is one of the reasons why practical OFDMA performance in Wi-Fi 6 has lagged behind. What were the expectations? So you could ask the question, uh, can we do anything better? And when I asked myself the same question, uh, I in fact wondered that we have had a working OFDMA scheduler system which we all use, which is the 4G, 5G, 4G of course, use and 5G coming in, okay? So my first thought was to give that a closer look and then maybe look at a few points. So what is difference in the way 4G first and continuing on 5G with some differences, of course, do with respect to the OFDMA aspects. Remember, there are lots of other differences which I've tried to capture in my other videos, but I'm just focusing on the scheduler aspect. The first, I think, most important difference is that in LTE and 5G, we block a small number of subcarriers, 12 to be precise, 12 consecutive subcarriers called as resource elements, and name it as a resource block. And we do not kind of uh, take larger units as such into, into sort of the whole scheduling makeup. We just use this as the block and then we assign different numbers of blocks. Let's say X1 to some user, X2 to another user, X3. So a lot of freedom exists and the choice is only between the X1s, X2, X3s. So somebody needs large, then maybe a large value for X1. Somebody needs small bandwidth in a particular unit of time, a smaller number in X2, etc. And so this, I think, makes the whole scheduler job relatively easier compared to the one that we saw for the Wi-Fi 6 case where we had pre-assigned those sizes and it was invariably going to result in some bandwidth wastage. So remember, one of the reasons why I'm even talking about this is 4G has been extremely successful in handling a variety of scenarios. It's one of the highly successful examples of a wireless systems, uh, working in high capacity, handling both voice and data uh, on the field. So there is a lot that we can sort of learn from it and also know that it is working in practice. 5G continues that, of course, hopes to improve upon various things there, right? So the first thought is, could this organization of the resources, where in one case, we pre-assume that these bandwidths will be useful and then we get caught in a little bit of a wasted scenario versus a scenario where we just have a small block and then decide the number of blocks to be given to different users. Which one is better? 
is this the reason that we don't see so many complaints about 4G or 5G scheduling vis-a-vis -vis OFDMA compared to Wi-Fi 6? I really don't know because it's something which can be investigated. So I'm looking for some comments, some maybe some thoughts, and maybe I'll also go on some way to evaluate that. I hope this was useful. For more videos, please take a look at our website. Uh, we also offer several courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. So look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you.